in the 60s based on inspiration yeah. from this name. Yeah. People start saying word, you know, word out. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And the acronym is Well Expressed Rational Declarations. Well Expressed Rational Declarations. Right. So yeah. th if this is how this is going to go, let's uh -huh. do it. I mean, <laughs> if, we, if, 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 we're gonna, if you're going to be dropping gems <laughs> like that, oh, so I did not know that. Yeah. Well Expressed Rational, rational declarations. declarations. Okay. Well, I like that. Um, so hopefully these are these are some of those. So the first one is Club Beautiful. You know what that is? No. You don't know what that is at all? <laughs> no. So this was when I was doing a little research. This was apparently the nickname for the Royal Peacock. Oh, well, I know uh, Royal okay. Peacock. So Royal Peacock. What's <laughs> yeah. the first thing that comes to your mind? Temptations. Temptations. Yes. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, okay. Yeah. They did. They, so do you all know where the Royal Peacock is? Yeah, everybody knows that. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh, you're um yeah. You're not from Atlanta. It's okay. Royal Peacock is right on Auburn Avenue. Is it this way? I'm horrible with directions. It's this, way. <laughs> it's this way. So um, we'll learn a little bit about the Royal Peacock. It's open now, but if you haven't been, stop by the Royal Peacock because when I was looking at all the people that came there, oh my gosh! Like everybody came, and all these like very historical things happened. Little Richard became Little Richard at the Royal Peacock. Um. Uh, like everyone was there. You could just Sam Cook. You could just find them kicking it and hanging out um, place. there. And I know um, Charles spent a number of evenings, maybe mornings, uh, in, in the in the Royal Peacock. Evenings yeah, evenings only at the Royal Peacock. Right. Okay, or Club Beautiful, just Atlanta history. All right, Plato. Plato reminds me of uh, the class I had with Dr. King. Yeah. Uh, which was a seminar on modern social philosophy. There were eight of us in the class. Julian Bond is one name you'd recognize. He was in that class. And we talked about um, philosophers that uh, impressed or influenced King. Yeah. Uh, Plato, Socrates, uh, Nietzsche, you know, Reinhold Niebuhr. Uh, we talked about Jesus. Yeah. And we talked about uh, Gandhi. Yeah. And, that. Nice. and it was his effort to help us to contextualize our movement. I was chairman of the movement here at the time. Yeah. Uh, in a broader scope of history. Yeah. And um, so it was good class. Do you like his stuff? Like Plato? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. But Plato and Socrates had um, this philosopher king concept. Yeah. And uh, Dr. King and I kind of argued about that a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, their philosophy was that, um, that people are born to certain pursuits. You know, okay. Some people are better suited as craftsmen. Right. Some as soldiers or right. policemen, we might call them today. Right. Uh, and the like. And and then there were philosophers, yeah. and only the philosophers who were wise should rule. That's where the philosopher king. Okay, be. okay. And I took the position, I thought it was a good idea. I didn't think we ought to have stupid people in charge. Right. <laughs> and Dr. King was arguing about, the one, now. Yeah, about democracy <laughs> and one man, one vote and all that stuff. Right. And I've often said that if he had been alive mm -hmm. during the current administration, yeah. He'd agree with me that stupid people should not be in charge. Ah, okay. Me and Plato and Socrates, right? Nice. All right. Yeah. Um, sit down, Black. <laughs> I did my research a little bit. That's a nickname that Julian Bond gave me uh, uh -huh. because uh, when we were having our sit-in uh, movements, I insisted that they should be called sit-down um, uh, actions because we were sitting down. Right. And, uh, Instead of sit in, yeah, and okay. that was a term that the labor union people had used in, in years past. Right, uh, it was sit down strikes. You know? Oh, okay, okay. And, and nobody bought that, but he, he continued to call me sit down black. Right, <laughs> right. So that was a, that was a nickname. So yeah. I'll I'll choose between Charles Charlie or sit down black. <laughs> all right, <laughs> okay. Um, all right, gentrification. Mm. Well, it's a naughty thing. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people are being displaced uh, because uh, mostly because white folk who left mm -hmm. are coming back now. They found out that uh, black folk don't eat you, mm. and that the city did not die. Yeah, and things are prospering without them. Yeah, so now they want to come back in and save on gas money. Okay, and uh, also on housing costs. Nice. And they're displacing people who've been there for uh, second, third generation who cannot afford the increased taxes that, uh, that come along with their coming in. All right. Mm. Riches. Hmm. Anybody here knew about Riches Department Store? Yeah. Yes. All right, all right. The Riches Department Store, for those of you who don't know, was a downtown department store. They had satellite locations. But it was the biggest department chain in the southeast. And in Atlanta, it was everybody's favorite store. And it was for several reasons. The main reason was 
that if you bought something, well, they had a, they had a motto that no sale is ever complete until the customer is satisfied. And what that literally meant was that if you bought something for riches today, and 10 years later, or 15 years later, it didn't work anymore, or you didn't like it anymore, or whatever, you could bring it back. Wow. And they would either refund your money or exchange the item for you. Wow. wow. So that was one thing. Wait, who does, that's Nordstrom. some, yeah, Nordstrom, like, people Nordstrom take those that. Uggs that have been like you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I see you were doing, I'm like, yo, that's, that's there, rare. There, there were a lot of wedding dresses <laughs> yeah, done that way. Yeah. Um, but uh, other reasons, people, one of my favorite reasons was at Christmas time, they had uh, what they called a secret shop. And parents could drop their kids off for two hours, you know, get the folk a list and a budget. Yeah. You know, and leave those kids to go shop for them while the kids shopped, you know, for their siblings or their parents or their friends or whatever. And uh, so we love that. You can leave the kids there for two hours. Um, they also had... Um, a pink pig. You might know about the pink pig. Yeah, they still have still? it. They do. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, Macy's. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, Macy's bought. Mm -hmm. uh, and the uh, pink pig was on the top of the building, and it went around this big Christmas tree, and they had live reindeer out there, and kids could ride in the pink pig. Uh, live reindeer. Yeah. Hmm. Live reindeer. Yeah. There was no real Santa there. Right. Uh, but there was a, live, a real reindeer. You can't. You can't spring it on. <laughs> <Yeah, right, right. laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, so anyhow, uh, so everybody was rich. So that when uh, we had our, our boycott of downtown Atlanta, if we were short on manpower, we would focus on Rich's department store because we knew if Rich's fell, you know, everybody would fall. And we were there. We, our boycott lasted a whole year. Uh, the clan came and picketed us. And uh, when, when they first started picking us, they had on uh, bibbed overalls under their white robes and stuff, and their dunce caps. Uh, and uh, after a couple of days, they, they came back with, with neckties on, and white shirts and stuff. Uh, so a reporter asked him, um, why the change? You know, and, and he quoted this guy as saying, we want to show these students we's dignified too. That's what the pants were saying. <laughs> so anyhow, we weren't intimidated by them, but somebody pointed out to them eventually that people who were not staying away because of us, stayed away because of them. So they made our boycott that much more effective. Nice. So after about three, four weeks, they stopped picking us. Which is Kanye West. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have to talk about Kanye West. So yeah, I'd rather pass. I can't you think of anything. <laughs> you know, whatever you want to say. Uh huh? Well, I think he's rude and crude. Okay. Very talented and rich, but yeah, uh, rude and crude. Okay, rude yeah. and crude. Yeah. Uh, newspaper. Uh, newspaper. I I think first of course about the Maroon Tiger at Morehouse College. Uh, I was the first junior to edit that paper, and then yeah. in my senior year, yeah. I also became editor of the Atlanta Enquirer newspaper after at the school. The Atlanta Enquirer grew out of our movement uh, largely because we couldn't get favorable coverage in the local newspapers, including the Atlanta Daily World from down the street. Right. Uh, C. A. Scott, who was a publisher there, was a dyed-in-the-wool conservative Republican. Only newspaper that adults Goldwater, and Nixon, right. and everybody else was going to edit it. Um, so in any event. Um, there was a guy named Pursuit Hill that had an office supply uh, store down the street. Uh, near on where Auburn? Our, on Auburn, yeah. Okay. Near where our first office was. Yeah. Well, not our first office. We got kicked off campus because um, the, uh, the presidents of the school wanted to kick the white folk out. Oh, okay. Like someone might be communist, so they kicked us off campus. We ended up at Joseph E. Boone's Church, Trust Memorial. And it was Chestnut, not Brawley. Um, and then we ended up on, on Auburn for a while. Uh, but in any event, uh, this guy, Kasuth Hill, came into the office and like a white man. Yeah. Ronnie King, who was the first chairman of our movement, uh, was there. And uh, he was wondering how this white man get in there, you know. And I think he told him who he was. He relaxed. But he owned uh, the rights to the newspaper name, the Atlanta Enquirer. Yeah. And he had a printing press. So he volunteered to give up the Enquirer to our movement and to print the paper for us. Because we were using little memory graph, like what the memory graph machine is down here. No, what is, right? what's a memory graph machine? Yeah. <laughs> There's some you crank like that. They, they need to do one copy at a time. Yes. Uh, I know, it's right. But anyhow, uh, we had little flyers we were passing out, so we didn't have a, a, a real good organ of communication. And the, right. the Atlanta Enquirer became that organ for us. And after I was out of school, I, I was editor for three years there. Wow. Yeah. All right. Uh, HBCUs. Well, um, you know, I'm a Morehouse man. As you know, you can always tell a Morehouse man, but you can't tell him much. 
<laughs> That's what they said. Uh, anyhow, I, uh, I had to leave Miami to go to college. There was no college in Miami that I could attend. That's where I'm from. All right. So I had to leave Miami. I could have gone in the state to FAMU, Bethune, Cookman, Edward Waters, or whatever, uh, but no school in Miami. And so various um, recruiters came around to our school uh, recruiting, and more else was one of them, uh, and uh, Clark and Hampton and, and some of the others uh, offered me scholarships, and more else offered me an early admission scholarship from 11th grade, which I declined because I'd been elected uh, student body president. I want to be a big man on campus. <laughs> so I stayed uh, for my, my 12th grade year. But there was a, uh, a guy who was a year behind me. He was in 10th grade. He was offered an early mission scholarship from Morehouse at the same time from 10th grade. He accepted the early mission scholarship. So when I got to Morehouse, instead of being a year behind me, he was a year ahead of me. Uh, and, and, me. and we were saying, yeah. I don't even know if they do that anymore. Like offer 10th graders admission to college, yeah. like yeah. now? Dual enrollment. Dual, oh, so you can go to high school and college yeah. at the same oh, yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. 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 So you about time you get to college right. like a junior. Yeah. Right. You have some credits. Yeah, you have to do of high school. Yeah. Yeah. So this was like, but during this time, I mean, what is this, 58-ish? 58. 50, yeah, 58. Like yeah. This is like, you can leave 11th grade and just go to college. Yeah, and he, he left 10th grade. Yeah. He yeah. Yeah. He's a very bright yeah. guy. By the way, he became Dr. Donald Hopkins, and he's largely credited with the elimination of the guinea worm and uh, smallpox. Donald Hopkins. Oh. Donald Hopkins. Another yeah. name we should know. Yeah, we should know that name. <laughs> yeah, he, uh, he worked at CDC for a while. He worked with... Uh, uh, the World Health Organization. He worked with the, the Carter Center yeah. uh, in dealing all this, this good stuff. And all. Yeah. Nice. And the last one is Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> I have never seen an episode Ooh, of Game yay, of Thrones. <laughs> I, I had to ask this just because, my, like... My daughter had a, a Game of Thrones party yeah, last week. Yeah. And everybody's all dressed. Yeah. 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 As, yeah. as they should. Yeah. yeah. Does anybody in here watch Game of Thrones? Yes. Is that a thing? Okay. So where the party at though? Um, but no. So that was so that was wordplay. So thank you for thank you for giving us your thoughts. Yeah. Um,